Hey guys, John here. Avenger 2 is probably one of my favorite synthesizers I've ever used, and in this video I'm going to show you six cool tricks that you can try making your own patches. Okay, so the first tip is going to be routing individual drums to sends. So for example, if we have a fresh patch here, let's turn down our oscillator and let's go to our drums tab. And for this example, let's go to EDM4 and then maybe City Kit. So we have this clap here. And let's say we want to put some reverb on it or maybe some delay or really whatever it is that we'd want. All we have to do is make sure that we select this here and then go to our routing menu, hit the plus, and then go down here to the reverb. And if we want a little bit more, we can add a little bit more like this. And keep in mind, this is individual. So for example, we can go to the snare two and we can see that this is not routed here. But if we go back to our clap, we can see that it's routed right over here. Tip number two is a really interesting one. So let's say again, we have some drums. So let's turn down our oscillator, go to our drums, and let's pick the same kit here. Okay, so now let's say we want to route our entire drum kit to an effects rack and then process that all together. So for example, we can click here on this master effects and we have a lot of different things to pick from, but down here at the bottom, it says assign all slots to FX one. We can click this here. And then for example, we can pick an effect like a bit byte and then maybe go for something like, I don't know, whatever this is here. So this way we can transform an entire drum kit with just routing it by one button here. And then we can always dial in the mix however we'd like to. So if we bypass this here. And maybe we even might want to add a delay to that as well. I think of all the possibilities you can add on this effect stack with all these drums routed to it. Okay, so tip number three, this one is probably one of my favorites here. And it's sometimes if I'm trying to make a drone or maybe kind of just like an ambient kind of sound, a cool way to do that is go into our oscillator here. So let's click our saw. And then over here in spectral, we can really pick any sample that we want to. You can even have a sample you already have and bring it into this. But for this example, let's go to factory two. And this one here, this metaphor bass has a lot of cool content in this. So if we double click this and we play some notes, so we have this, right? So what we can do is grab our end here and go all the way here to the left. So we're just focusing on this area here and let's right click this and maybe first add an EQ and then maybe a compressor to kind of bring things up a little bit. Okay, so we have this. Now we might want a long release tail, something like that. And here's where the magic happens. So on this FFT mode where it says song slash mix here, there's quite a different things to pick from. I do like drone, for example, that one's really cool. And then we can really slow the speed down. Slow down our attack. So we have something like that, or we can even disable this entirely. So we have this, right? So now we can increase this here. The magnitude decay. Random phase as well. And I love this tone shift knob as well. So if we right click here, we can see this is gonna be a plus 12, so an octave up, and we start increasing this with left click. So now if we're on our EQ, we can open this guy up here and we can take out some of that mud. And then all we need to do now is maybe add a little bit of delay here. And then one of my all-time favorites here is the root of verb and changing this from stage to abyss and maybe drop down the decay just a little bit and the high cut. So once we have this, we can always start going to the filter and kind of, you know, start modulating this if we really like to. Or what we can do as well is we can double click this here, maybe put this on a macro, but for now we can just move this knob individually. And 
don't forget, since this is kind of a creepy sound, we do have shimmer as well. So we can increase the shimmer feedback a little bit here. And what I kind of like doing is bring this down just by negative one-ish or so like that, just to get a little bit of that creepy reverb going. Keep in mind, you can put any sample and audio inside into this engine here, and it's gonna sound really, really crazy. So I highly recommend to put whatever you like in there and see what you come up with. Tip number four is also really, really cool. So we all know that we have presets inside of the different modules. So if we're in the ARP, we can click this list down here and we have different ARP presets that we can choose from, which is actually really, really cool. However, I do want you to be aware that we have per rack presets. For example, let's give this some unison. Maybe detune it a bit here. Drag our cutoff down, give it some modulation and a little bit of resonance. Something kind of like that. So we have this kind of lead here and we want to throw a, uh, a rack on here. So what we can do is instead of going through things individually by loading everything like that, we can click this button down over here and we have a huge list of things to go through. Now, some of the EDM leads are pretty cool. So this enhancer too. So we have that and then now we can even just if we say, hey, maybe we want to route this to an ARP, we can click our ARP here. And then maybe we want to say we want to add a drum kit to it. So it's definitely pretty cool. And keep in mind, let's say, for example, that you have, let's open up another effects rack. We have a delay, maybe some reverb, who knows what, let's put all these random things on here. And then let's say we like this effect rack right here. We can click this menu here as well, and then we can save our own preset racks, which is really, really cool. In case you realize you start doing the same things over and over, you can make sure to save that entire rack as its own preset. Another really cool rack preset that I like as well. So let's make something here real quick. Let's bring our cutoff down and maybe... So something kind of quick like that, we can send this to our ARP and then let's clear everything out. And it's gonna just make like a little rhythm like this. So you have something like that. And then we go down here to the uh, these three lines and then there's a lot of these cool different multi-taps. So just trying the first one out. Bring this up an octave here. So that's already pretty cool. Now, sometimes I do like to bring the mix down of these delays a little bit, but what we can do as well is we can add some reverb on here because this is screaming, add some reverb to me. So let's do some, maybe something like this here. And we can change our octaves here to two octaves. So you get a pretty cool patch like that and you waste virtually no time. Also keep in mind, there's a couple other ones to pick from. So let's check out two real quick. So I definitely like that one as well. And then also we can do the spread here to kind of make things move across the stereo field a little bit more and also add our reverb back. So our root of verb, bring down our decay and then bring down the high cut and maybe increase the mix just a little bit. And instead of just going up, I also like this alternate too.
But yeah, keep in mind there's quite a lot to pick from, so definitely spend some time and go through some of these and also make your own. Tip number five is syncing our LFO to our kick drum inside of Venture 2, and this is a really cool way to get some extra motion out of our oscillator. So for example, let's bring our oscillator one here with some unison, maybe get to all seven voices, a little detuning, and for our voicing, let's add a sub square, something kind of like that. And for our cutoff, let's bring this guy down here, add a little bit of resonance, and then drag and drop our LFO right over here and give it some depth. Okay, so we have something moving like this. Now, for example, this is going to be on the first MIDI note. So once it re-triggers, now we can change this to the drums. And then down here at the bottom, we can go to bass drum, which is really cool. And then for our rate, let's go one over eight. So we're moving about this speed here. So now we need to get a drum kit here. And for this one, we're gonna go for the expand kit. And instead of a side wave for the LFO shape, what we can do is right click this here and we can go for this ramp down. So this sounds relatively the same because if we look over here on our drum sequencer, this is basically hitting on every fourth. So what we can do is we can add another one right over here and see what this does now. Maybe add another one here as well. And if we even change the filter out maybe to the Vintage 12, which is one of my favorites, let's bring this up to 100 and kind of crank a resonance so we can really feel this moving. Now, we don't always have to do it with a kick drum here. We can do it with our clap. So if we click this down here and go to our drums, we can select the clap now. Or really any drums in here that you would like. I personally think the kick drum is probably the coolest because you can make some really cool rhythms with that as well. Yeah, so definitely give that one a try. So the last tip is really focusing on this quantum effects here. Now I made a patch called Quantum Mechanics and it sounds kind of something like this. <laughs> Now, there is a lot going on, but it's actually rather simple. So the oscillator that we're actually really going to be focusing on is this first one here. So that kind of stuff. So let's go to an init patch and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So we have a saw wave. Let's give it some unison here. Maybe some detuning. We can actually get maybe all the voices. And then maybe for this, let's add an ARP here and then let's bring a sustain down for our amp. There's something kind of like that. Okay, so we have something kind of like this here. And what I like to do is clear out the entire ARP entirely so we don't have anything and kind of just start making some kind of rhythm here that we that might sound kind of cool. So. Now it should sound kind of sparse. So in the beginning, what we can do is maybe add an EQ and we might come back to that in a little bit. But first add our compressor. Okay, so we have something like this now. If we right click here and we open up our quantum effects. Now this thing is really, really cool. So for our first delay, I'm just gonna turn these off for now and look at the first one. So the first one is gonna be the FX type. So what do we really want this to do? We have a whole list of things that we can change. So a cool one here could maybe be the panning. So something like this here. So those delays are gonna be panned once they get here. Now on the mode, I like to do a lot of these on random. So it's gonna just move along the stereo field. Now for the next one, let's select this here and maybe phaser might actually be kind of cool. Let's bring this all the way down. Kind of just select a few ones kind of like this here, not too much. And then for forward, let's go to random again. But now for this one, instead of one over eight, let's go one over 16.
increase this a little bit here. Okay, so we have this one here. Now for our third one, what we can do is look down through here and see maybe which ones do we want. A cool one is also gonna be drive a little bit of distortion here. So let's bring this down and maybe a couple of these ones in here like that. And then again, let's go to random. Okay, so we have this one here. Now we can go to the second delay here and let's put our input all the way to the top here. And let's kind of do the same thing again. But now for this effects type, a really cool one is going to be stutter. So we can pick on stutter and then bring these all the way down to the bottom. And we can see on our tooltip how many stutters this is going to have. So maybe four for this guy. And this one's going to be kind of crazy, maybe 16. And then maybe two or three for the next one. it down just a little bit here and then maybe add another one kind of like that and then again let's go from forward to random and let's see what that sounds like on 16th so it's a cool effect it's a little bit loud so we can always bring this down a little bit and kind of fade it in i suppose Maybe remove this one entirely, so we just have a couple of them to play with. So we have that, and then for our next one, we can go in here and maybe add another one that we like. Maybe we can go for octave, that might be kind of cool as well. So maybe bring up an octave here, uh, maybe another one here, and then down for this guy. And then again, we can go for random. We have this motion kind of going on it's kind of chaotic here so what we could do is maybe modulate this pan with an lfo which might be kind of interesting as well so let's give it some depth like that and give it some release here so we basically have these ingredients here and we have even more too we have another delay three and then we have a match if we want to do some more stuff but for now this is kind of cool feel free to experiment with the other fx types as well So we have that and then maybe we can even add another delay and delay everything so it's kind of just a lot of delays built upon each other and then maybe we can add some root of verb as well on this one and maybe change this to you know stage might be fine bring this guy down and then maybe after the delay we can right click this here and maybe we can go for a uh, multi-band distortion see what that kind of sounds like so we're already kind of starting to get a rhythm based off that arp and all these weird delays kind of going around each other so now what's really cool is if we go to our drums and kind of see how that sounds behind a drum kit So from here, I'd probably add another mini chain and then maybe skate or sync this to the bass drum. So we have that, and then maybe if we want to get some lows, we could put some uh, put a bass in the background, or we can draw draw <laughs> drag and drop a couple of these down. And maybe before we get into the quantum effects, or maybe we can do at the top of the EQ. It really depends on the staging. But for example, we can maybe get some lows this way. We can even add a sub oscillator here in the voicing, maybe do a square. And as we mentioned before, with the send effects on the drums, we can go over to our drums and let's see which one's playing the, uh, the upbeat here. So it's gonna be our clap. So select our clap here and then go plus and then add this to the reverb and then give it some, uh, some percentage here. So 
So there you go, you have something pretty simplistic to put together with the quantum, and then you kind of just adding these delays, moving everything around, putting some drums in there and making it pump a little bit. And you can get a really cool sequence that way. And keep in mind, I mean, with the drums aside, this is literally one oscillator. So, I mean, it's a pretty big patch just by using one. And then you can even add a bass if you want to do that for the second one and maybe introduce some other things, put these on macros. It's really up to you what you want to do with it. And then even at the very end here on the master, you can even bring it up through maybe some extra compression if you'd like to. Really make it grungy. And then as the tip before, you can always route all of our drums to another effect stack and kind of make those bit bitey as well and see what that process turns out like. So yeah, that was pretty much all these cool tips. There probably might be some more because there's so many so many things you can do inside the synthesizer. But I wanted to share those six tips with you and maybe, maybe it'll make your patches a little bit more interesting. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.